Okay, this is spec point three point two point one point two, and this is on stable and unstable nuclei as part of the UKA level physics specification. What we're going to talk about in this topic is about the strong nuclear force to start with. So the strong nuclear force. Strong nuclear force um, is a force which kind of governs um, how the subatomic particles within the nucleus work together and how they um, essentially manage within the environment that they are in. Remember that um, isotopes uh, have nucleuses which are strong. They stay together, they don't disintegrate, they don't fall apart. They are essentially the base of every atom that is there. There must be a force which governs this, and this is a strong nuclear force. It's one of the four fundamental forces that we have in physics. Um, before we move on, I just want to remind you that one femtometer is 10 to the minus 15 meters. It's going to come up pretty useful in the next um, graph I'm going to draw. This is a graph of the strong nuclear force. We have distance on the x-axis and over here we have the force on the y-axis. We have the force being repulsive um, for the positive sections of the graph and attractive for the um, negative sections. It does seem weird but that's the way it is. You learn more about it in um, gravitational force topic. Strong nuclear force, the graph looks like this. Okay, that's for the strong nuclear force. And the electrostatic force, it looks like this, ES for electrostatic force. So what we can say um, is that its range of the strong nuclear force is no more than about 3 to 4 femtometers. So over here, when it starts to bend, um, head towards the asymptote, towards the x-axis, it has a 3 to 4 femtometer range. What we know about the strong nuclear force is that in these distances, so up to about this line, Okay, where it's about 0 0.5 femtometers, we have the force being um, in the repulsive region. So this is to stop the constituent um, protons and neutrons from absolutely like just colliding together and sticking together. It's essentially holding them apart. So if I go over here and I say that in the atom we have a proton and then we have a neutron, it's essentially pulling them um, apart from one another in that section of the graph. In this section of the graph, which is about 0 0.5 to about... Um, uh, three to four femtometers, it stops them being um, pushed into one another, okay? It, it stops them, um, it's helping them to be attractive. It's attractive in this region because if you take a proton and a proton, so neighboring protons in a nucleus, because they are like charges, they're going to repel from one another, they're going to want to blast out, but actually in these regions, it holds them together. So to summarize, very small regions, it stops them from colliding together so they don't touch, but um, it doesn't allow them to essentially fly off in opposite directions. It keeps them kind of firm together within the nucleus and um, within the nuclear range. So that is for the strong nuclear force. Um, yeah, that's what you mainly need to know for that. What we're going to talk about now is about um, unstable nuclei in terms of alpha, beta, and gamma decay. So... There are three types of radioactive decay. Now, you probably studied this all at GCSE, so this is just a bit of a refresher. Alpha particles consist of a helium nucleus, so we have four, two. Okay, the mass number four, and the um, main number is two. So when a particle um, emits alpha decay, it, it does so in accordance with the following equation. So if we have X, A, Z, it's going to emit a um, dot particle, Y, and also an alpha particle for two. The y over here is going to be a minus four, and z take two, and that is to compensate for the alpha particle on that side. So that's the general decay equation for alpha. Helium nucleus. Uh, next thing is of, of beta. Now beta, as you can see, you just learn it as beta. Here we have beta plus, and we also have beta minus. So beta minus is basically an electron, and beta plus is basically a positron. If you don't know what positron is, positron is the antiparticle of an electron. So that is going to be 1, 0, and that's going to be minus 1, 0 over there. So it is fast moving, and it's um, basically opposite to that of a proton. This one's identical to that of a proton. This one's opposite to that of a proton. Um, when we um, decay via beta plus, it does so in the following way. We emit a beta plus more particle and we also emit a neutrino okay so um beta decay um beta decay um the general equation x a z and it goes to a daughter particle y uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment it's going to release a beta negative particle so a beta minus particle and when it releases a beta minus particle it will also release another particle called a anti-neutrino 
you haven't heard about neutrinos yet, they will come up. Um, but that's essentially all it is. Now this over here, because the beta particle is 0, negative 1, this down here is going to be z plus 1, and a over here is going to remain unchanged because there's no need for any uh, conservation in that case. Remember that neutrinos, um, well you don't know this, but neutrinos are massless and chargeless. So that's going to be the case over there. So that is for beta um, minus. If we have beta plus, that's simply going to change to a plus over there, and that's simply going to change to a minus over there. Nothing is um, else will change apart from the fact that we don't have an anti-neutrino, we have a neutrino. So that is for beta plus decay. Right, gamma. Um, gamma consists of a EM radiation, which is emitted by an unstable nucleus. You can pass through thick metal plates, no mass, no charge, emitted by the nucleus with too much energy. Gamma gives off a um, virtual photon, or just a photon. Um, symbol looks like this. So, uh, gamma decay it is zero, 0, so it doesn't really affect anything if you have particle X, A, Z. It just goes to particle X, A, Z. And it may, it may um, emit a gamma ray, just because it has excess energy. So that is just basically gamma. Um, other things that you need to know is about the neutrino, a bit more information about the um, neutrino. So the neutrino was hypothesized by a group of scientists when they were conducting beta minus decay equations. The neutrino was basically there because they saw that there was a gap in the amount of energy um, that was produced. And so they hypothesized this particle, which was massless and chargeless, but just had a bit of energy to conserve it. To make sure everything made sense and then the center particle is the antineutrino where you just draw a little line on top to show that it's an antineutrino. That's basically all that we have. Um, if you want to develop any practical skills, the specification point says you can demonstrate it to kind of measure the count rate of certain radiation um, using a Gaga military, um, should you wish to. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below. Thank you.